All right, well, hello, physical science students. Welcome to this video lecture, which is meant to introduce you to this idea of free body diagrams. So free body diagrams really simply are just a visual representation, a simplified visual representation of the forces acting on an object. So when we look at real-world scenarios, we want to isolate objects and ask ourselves what forces are actually acting on that object. And we use free body diagrams to document those forces. And right now, in this lesson, we're just going to focus on qualitative free body diagrams. So what I mean by that is just showing what forces are acting on those objects. As we move throughout this unit, we're going to utilize free body diagrams in some more advanced ways. And those advanced ways are going to help us actually maybe solve and analyze scenarios in more detail. Okay, But for right now, our job with these free body diagrams is to just show visually what forces are acting on an object. So. I think the best way to go about this is just to go through some examples. Um, so first example here, we just we have an apple sitting on a table. So to draw a proper free body diagram, you can either use a little box. I often like to use just a dot. Okay, so we'll represent the apple here as a dot. Okay, now first and foremost, Every object that we look at, we know that one force is always acting on that object. And that force is the force of gravity. Okay, so we're going to draw an arrow in the downward direction because we know gravity pulls things downward. And we're always going to label our forces in our free body diagram. So I'm going to label force of gravity F subscript G. Now, what is preventing that apple from falling to the ground? Well, the table is there, right? So the table is applying a force upward on the apple. And we should know that that force that's acting upward on the apple is the normal force. Okay? So the normal force, again, is like a support force. It, prevents things from falling to the ground, if we want to make it super simple, okay? So, that is our free body diagram for this first scenario. That apple is only experiencing two forces, the force of gravity from the earth and the normal force supporting it from the table. Now, in this, uh, in this next example here, I want to focus on the box, I want to focus on the box. That is the object that we're going to draw a free body diagram for. So, again, I'm going to start out with a dot. Again, well, you know what? I could use a little box here. This is up to you. You can use a little box or you can use a dot. I always use a dot just because it's simple. But anyway, again, let's start out. This guy is pushing this box, pushing this box across the floor. And it looks like he's struggling. It doesn't look like he's very strong. What force do we always know acts on objects? It is the force of gravity. Now, this box is also interacting with the floor. The floor is supporting the box. So the floor is applying a normal force to the box. Now, again, this guy is pushing the box in the rightward direction. So there is an applied force from this guy on the box in this direction. So we can say that there is an applied force. Now, finally, very real world here. This guy is pushing a box across the floor. Again, imagine that you're pushing a box across the floor. You feel some resistance, right? from the floor itself. So we know that there's some resistance to that box's motion, meaning that there is a force of friction 
acting towards the left. Okay? Now, the last example here, we got this weightlifter guy, whatever. He's just hanging from a pull-up bar. So, once again, little dot. Force that always acts on objects, force of gravity, acting downward. Now, the next part is interesting. Uh, this guy is hanging there. So, there's actually two forces that are acting in this upwards direction, right? And we could consider these forces to be force of tension. Because there's tension in, in this guy's arms. Granted, it's not, you know, the, the definition that we have for force of tension is it has to be uh, a string, a rope, or a wire, or something like that. But in this guy's arms, there is tension. So I would categorize these best as tensional forces. Now, something that I, that, that, that I want to note here is notice that I kind of angled these force of tensions here. And notice that these guys, this guy's arms are at angles here. We want to try our best in our free body diagrams to show the direction that these forces are acting. And I'm doing that here with angling these force vectors. So this is actually really important. This is, this is an important idea. A force is a vector quantity. And if we remember what a vector quantity is from our first unit, a vector quantity, remember, we need an actual value, a magnitude, and a direction. And notice that we're showing the direction these forces are acting by the arrows that we're drawing in our free body diagrams. Later on in this unit, we'll see how we can actually attach values or magnitudes to these forces and also directions based on our free body diagrams, okay? So to summarize, free body diagrams, simplified visual representations of forces acting on an object. Very important that we show the direction that those forces are acting. And we're also labeling the types of forces that are present. Take care of physical science students.